hate the crickets. Now how creepy is that <laughs> The great migration of the Mormon cricket. Kind of concerns a sportsman, makes you wonder if uh, if it's hurting the deer. I mean, you stop for five seconds, or crawling up your leg, biting your boots, and that you know they're they're eating their. I mean, they're eating themselves. It's kind of creepy. We got some more footage that's gonna just creep your skin out big time. We're almost over the hill to the creek. And when they get to water, it's amazing. Well, we're here on a, one of the last snow drifts. You can hear the military jets flying over us. Seems like it's a something that happens every time I want to talk on video. But look at all of this, all of these crickets. And it's kind of calmed down since we went by this morning. But um, there's so many of them and there's feces from these crickets everywhere. And when they're, you know, pooping on the snow, it's literally turning it red. So it's turning the snow red from so many being on this snow. It's creepy. If you've never been in the middle of a migration of the Mormon crickets, it just is, it's kind of disgusting. Uh, they leave you alone for the most part. But seeing that I'm a taxidermist and I do a lot of tanning and I get salt and, you know, the smell of taxidermy on my boots, I stand still for five seconds and they're, they're trying to bite my boots off. So, <laughs> this is so crazy. Uh, this is the most I've ever seen. You know, normally they show up and then they don't come back for three to five years. And now in the last three years, they've been every, every year, every spring and summer. So, I don't know what they do, if they have to poison, but uh, like the old saying with the Mormon crickets, they had the seagulls come in to save their crops. I don't see any seagulls in South Idaho. We still got to take you to the really creepy place. That's coming up next. Stay with us. Hopefully we don't e get eaten. Here's the creek crossing. And there's any kind of water. You don't want to touch the bushes because they'll fall off onto you. And here's a great shot at what these are doing in southwest Idaho. They're already attacking my boots. They're coming right to me. Look. If I don't watch them, they will literally start chewing on my boots. But this is, I would say millions, billions, trillions of crickets. And they're migrating almost a hundred miles to wherever the hell they're going. Grab them. There you go. They're good. They're good catfish bait. This is easy pickings. <laughs> Chase them around for an hour. Even when they come out, they're too cold to move.
These are big fat ones too. Well, only after about 10 minutes with these crickets in the creek, I have a full bag of crickets. Go do some catfishing hopefully this week and maybe uh, I'll do an episode of catfishing down on the Snake River here in Idaho for you. Maybe uh, even a little, uh, it'd be our first catch and cook and the bait we used. Stay with us, High Country Carnage. Like I said, like and subscribe. 2019 is going to look like, it's looking like it's going to be a good good season for us hunting. Uh, a couple of our guys have drawn uh, good early season archery tags for antelope. So, High Country Carnage, stay with us. Well, here we go. Alan Burrell with High Country Carnage. Got my catfishing buddy Joe watching Man in the Rods. But this is the day after we got back from catching all those crickets uh, in South Hawaii. And told you we were going to do a little catch and cook. And we've already got, I think, nine or ten cats in the in the boat. Um, but I want to show you right here. This is what we're using. Putting it on a circle hook right there. Frozen. So they're they're staying on the hook pretty good. Um, Joe doesn't like them, but he's liking catching the fish on them. But uh, so there they are, right there. And what we're doing is we're just dropping them down to the bottom, and um, fish are eating it up. Last trip, it was uh, Joe's special concoction of liver, but this time it seems to be the crickets. So what we're going to do is we're going to sit here and maybe get a get one on uh, camera catching a few of them, and then we're going to we've already got them filleted in here. Let me show you this. This is the best way to do it. Is that they're they're all ready in a bag on ice, ready to roll. So we're gonna put stuff back in the water, put the poles back in the water, and we're gonna see how many more we can catch. If we can get 20, that'll fill my freezer enough for the for the winter and elk camp, and I like to have the catfish meat. So here we go. Stay with us. Yeah, there we go, baby. Is it a good one? Oh, yeah. oh, oh we got two. Uh, I think I'm in my Oh, line. you're on that one? Oh, we might have two. He's still on yours. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me when I need to get the net. Get him up. Put some muscle into it, Joe. <laughs> oh, yeah. There we go. <laughs> Catfish. It's what's for dinner. Well, we were putting Joe's away. Might have caught it on camera, actually. This rod going down when we were videoing Joe. And this is a toad. He does not want to come up off the bottom. Sometimes we're getting two at a time. Make it. 
difficult. Ah, uh, maybe share Ah, uh, maybe not. He's a good one. He does not want to come up. Start to now. Yeah, yeah there's a good one. Oh, got the... There we go! It's a good catfish. Probably eight, eight pounds, seven, eight pounds. High country carnage. Fill in the freezer with meat. There we go, baby. Let's catch another one. Well, we've been catching the crap out of these catfish. So now it's time to get our third big bag of fillets. And we got, I think we got seven or eight in the in the live well. So I'm gonna show you how to how I fillet these catfish. So what I do is I start at the back of the dorsal. Are you down here on the fish? Yep. You start at the back of the dorsal and you make a line to the anal fin there and then you just go right down that spine flip it over and fillet off just like that and then you do the other side just like that and just like that and that way you've got Fresh, clean fillets to put in the cooler in a bag, and they're already done by the time you get home. And we got a fish on Joe's pole right there. Okay, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cook these fillets for you. Well, that was a good day cow fishing. It was way worth uh, getting those crickets last weekend. Still got a ton left, but we did pretty good. Doing a double check, right, walk around on the boat. Make sure everything's good. Lock down. And now let's go home and cook some catfish for you. A little catch and cook. And it's a, kind of a cool way to do your catfish to where it doesn't have any catfish smell or taste. So stay with us. We're gonna be cooking right here, right next. Let's go. Well, here we go, guys. Where it's been a couple days since we've been back from that awesome catfish trip. And, uh, I said I was gonna do a little catch and cook uh, segment and I'm gonna show you how to do it right now. I'm gonna set a few things out and then we're gonna get started on uh, making some awesome, delicious catfish. Well, what we have here is called the Big Boss Heated Air Cooker. And you can see that it does quite a few things on there that, uh, and temperature, timer gauge, and it's got this big glass bin to put it in. And you can see there's a little uh, cart thing down there that the fish will go down in onto. And uh, let's get started with uh, seasoning the catfish. So now that I've got the tray out, what I wanna do is I wanna take a piece of tin foil and I'm just gonna shape it down into the bottom of this little screen tray and just wrap around the bottom here, around the sides. And I want to take some uh, snow stick spray just for good measure, layer the bottom. And what we have is three really good fillets of catfish. And what I do is I'll lay them in opposites of each other. So two fairly nice ones and then, you know, a little extra for a half there. So what we have here is good old fashioned soy sauce. You can get this at any store. This is just happened to be the great value brand. A little bit in there. And what I like to do is I like to dab some on there. Don't get real heavy with it or it'll be too salty. So the one of the first seasonings I like to put on there is some Lowry's seasoned salt and very light dusting of that on there and then the next 
will be garlic salt. Get that anywhere, doesn't matter what type you get. But just another good little sprinkle coverage on there. I like my garlic salt. And then the magical Grill Masters Montreal, this is steak, steak seasoning. You can use, they have some fish and stuff. Uh, and uh, But I, the Montreal steak seasoning kind of pretty much goes with anything fish or wild game. So we tend to go through quite a bit of this. And then I put a, a really good dusting. I like this stuff, so I like it to have that nice flavor and then pat it down into the fish nice and good if, if there's anybody out there that's watching this uh, that has any other any other good seasonings for catfish or fish in general or even wild game um, any of you youtubers out there that are doing your own catching cooks uh, put a put a dis or Put a put a comment down below here and and give us a shout out and we we'll might give uh, your your product or the type of seasonings that you like a try. Okay, so now that this is ready, mm mmm. Now that that's ready to go, we're gonna throw it into this uh, air dryer. So here we go. Here's the air dryer, the big boss. Steph just happened to have gotten it for her birthday or Christmas or whatever it was. But uh, this thing's been pretty good and proven to cook catfish. I mean, absolutely delicious. So uh, what we do is we turn the, the temperature right here about 375. It says 400 for 18 minutes, but that normally is not true to the, the cooking time of catfish. Um, and then there's a timer here. What we do is we'll turn that to about 40 minutes. And as soon as you let go, it starts going. So you just lift the top off and stick this down onto the tray, down in the bottom. Place this back on. And then all you gotta do is close. And see that heat up? That will actually begin to cook that, that catfish very quick. So we're going to let it go for about 35 more minutes and uh, we'll check it and see how it turns out. You can already smell the yummy goodness of these catfish. They're going to taste so good. Okay, we got about seven, eight minutes left on this fish. And you can see down in there. Let's see if I can't get a. You can see it's boiling in there, nice and yummy. You can also do it this way in an oven. You just make a, a tin foil boat, put the fish in the boat and do the exact same seasoning and process that I just showed you with this air dryer and it turns out just as good. This just seems that it gives it a little more crispiness to it. So a few more minutes, uh, we'll check it, get some potatoes and rice. We're going to eat this stuff. Well, the catfish is ready. And we just scoop it out. Mm-mm. Steph has her rice. She likes it with rice. And I am going to have potato. Well, there we go. I got my potatoes ready. So I'm going to get this catfish out again my plate. Mm, mm, mm. And I am a ranch dressing kind of guy. 
all my potatoes and food. And what I like to do is just open them up. Some small older potatoes. But they'll do. They'll work. Then a little bit of ranch. That will complete my dinner for the night. So like I said, if anybody has any ideas of other seasonings that they use for catfish, or YouTubers that make their own, they want us to give it a try, uh, message us on our Facebook page, High Country Carnage, or even message us down below on the comments on our page or on our post so this is it circle of life we catch the crickets the crickets catch the catfish so we can eat the catfish yeah like and subscribe